Good morning, everyone. We will call the Community Emergency Services Committee uh, to order. Follow with me, please. Our most high and mighty Lord, we thank you for all of the gifts that you bestow us with, uh, the people that you surround us with. We know that we are sustained by your mercies and that we must be good people to remain in enjoyment uh, of your graces. Thank you for all of the people around us who protect us, who keep our quality of life, our fire, safety, first responders, and police. We are a people facing an uncertain future, and we ask you to come reside with us as we consider the best path for our people and our community. Amen. I pledge. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, to the Republic. We have uh, Commissioner uh, Richardson and myself today to carry the day. Uh, sir, we have the minutes of the previous meeting. What's your pleasure with them? Motion to approve. So moved. Uh, presentation. I understand we have leadership here with us today. Stand up here. Let us embarrass you. Come on, let, let, us, let us know about you. Please introduce yourself. Yeah. And where you're from, where you work. All right, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. I'd like to, uh, int we have introduction of Lauren Luoma. New, yes, please come up. I need to come, I need to come see you this week. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> my wife said I do. Uh, yesterday. That's what my wife said I do. Now, she told you that we execute every plant that comes onto our farm, right? Well, hopefully. <laughs> well, I, do, I do need help. Okay. <laughs> please, please go on. Well, good morning. Um, I want to thank you all for having us this morning. Um, you know, in extension, it's, it's kind of a cooperative thing. And, and what I enjoy is, is working with not only you all, but also the managers and staff, especially the people that are here, that are behind us. So uh, we are truly grateful for that. So without further ado, I want to introduce Lauren Luoma, who is our new 4-H agent. Uh, we do have a very limited amount of time because we'll be going to classroom right after this, but. Hi, I'm Lauren Luoma. Um, I'm actually a native of Columbia County. I grew up, I graduated from Lakeside with uh, Dr. Carney as my principal back in 2009, graduated from UGA, finally made my way back home after 22 years I'm just really excited to get back involved in the program. We're back in school after being virtual for two years. Um, so we have a lot of great programming planned. You're going to start seeing us more in the community. We were already at Ironman on Sunday. About 26 volunteers for 107 volunteer hours over the day. Um, so we're just really excited to be back involved in the community. We need anything of our youth. Um, trying to show off my kids all the time. We're just here for you, and we're really excited to be more involved in the community. Very good. Home. Welcome. Welcome. <clears throat> I have uh, Ms. Priscilla Benz. Would like to speak to us? How are you doing this morning, Priscilla? You can. Pass it up for you. Absolutely. I have. I have. Got one. Yes, sir. Here's Gary. Here we go. Thank you for letting me speak today. Uh, commissioners, I appreciate the work you do. Appreciate the wonderful work here in the government complex and the beautiful library. Um, I'm a mother and grandmother and been living here for 38 years, retired Army. Um, I worked 20 years in public health, 15 years uh, supervising, ST, 13 years supervising HIV STD clinics. What I noticed, uh, the problem I'm bringing to your attention is that when I went to the library a few months ago, there was a book named Drama on the shelf next to the bottom in the juvenile section, and I had already challenged it at the school. 
and I challenged it, and the challenge was denied. But my concern is that these LGBTQ, pro-gay, pro-homosexual <coughs> agenda books are interspersed throughout the entire library. And uh, what I'm recommending is that they be labeled and put into the adult section. Um, the problem that you have is that the authors of these books want them interspersed. They want to increase the acceptance of the homosexual alternative lifestyle, alternative lifestyle. But if we separate them into the adult section, have supervision by parents and guardians, then I think we're representing the people of the county better <coughs> than just interspersing them. The problem with, uh, that I met with at the library board when I talked to them is that there are authors that request the books be in certain age-designated areas. And what I'm saying is that the author should not dictate to the community where we have these books. The authors are going to, every single one is going to want them in the age that they want to affect. They want to increase LGBTQ acceptance, and not just acceptance, but actually increase that lifestyle. And that's what we've seen happen over the last 30 years. Do we want that for Columbia County? There's counties that make exception to that. They separate out the books, let the adults, let the parents or the guardians decide if they want their child to read that. An alternate to that would be putting the children's books behind the librarians at the circulation desk so that the parent coming through can ask for that book. Because many parents will preview the books before their children see them. However, that is impossible if you've got two or three kids and you've got a good reader, five or six year old like one of my grandkids, they can easily go over to the juvenile where they can get a book that's graphic, that's extremely pro-homosexual lifestyle that encourages children to be popular, to be the, the greatest thing, you know, to live the alternative lifestyle on the second shelf from the bottom in the juvenile youth section, which is right next to the children's section. So an easy, not easy, but the most doable thing would be to label these books, put them in the adult section. That includes the children, juvenile youth, and young adult. Why do I say young adult? Because even that room downstairs is frequented by young teens. I've watched it. So you've got children under 18 that are going into these, that are reading these books with no supervision. You can't possibly um, supervise kids in all those areas. There's been some mix up in the community saying that somebody challenged to kill a mockingbird. I don't know who that person is. That's history. We learn from hard truths that we read in books. But we don't want to teach our children that it's better to be a homosexual or lead an alternative lifestyle. We know now, we know for the last 30 years, we've watched the data. More suicides, more depression, more mental illness, shorter lifestyle, 25 years, shorter, life, shorter lifespan, excuse me. We know these facts, and as the adults, as the, as the guardians of our children, we need to watch what they're taking in their brains. We're protecting them because they're under 18, just like we do with alcohol, smoking, movies that we rate. We don't let a five-year-old go to an R-rated movie. Firearms that we purchase, we don't let underage purchase Firearms. We don't even let our teenagers get married without signing permission. So that's my recommendation, and, and I'm assuming that the one assumption I am making is that most people in this county are either Christian, Hindu, or Muslim. All three of those religions do not encourage homosexuality or alternative lifestyles. None of those religions and probably most of the other religions of the world do not encourage it. We know, in fact, that it's a symptom of a declining civilization. Do we want to slow it down, safeguards, or do we want to hurry it along with our children and our grandchildren? Thank you. Thank you very much.
Uh, can I, Mary Linda here, can I call on you to uh, review for us? Whenever I examine a question, we should look at what the rules and the statutes are. And okay. Yeah, you please do that for us. Okay, so um, I'll start off with the stats. In our children's collection, which is from board books, books, easy books, juvenile books, um, there's a total of 33,753 items, 71 of those items are of the subject and spoke about, which is 0.2 of our collection for children. Um, we purchased books through our vendor. Um, the, my librarians that purchase, the, that select the books, we um, reviews. And if they have great reviews, if they're on the New York Times bestseller list, we will purchase those. If they don't have such good reviews, or if they're self-published, we typically don't purchase those unless a patron specifically requests that item. Um, the when we purchase items, the author there are authors that write all different age levels. They have a age range in the books. Um, it's not necessarily that the author says their book has to go here. Sometimes when we purchase a book and it will come in, and we go. My cataloger catalogs it. She looks in the Pine system, which is statewide, and if the book came to us saying it should be, um, I don't maybe easy, but everybody else has it, or the majority of all the other libraries in the state have it in picture, the children's librarian and the cataloger will discuss where the best place to put it. There is amongst the staff. So by definition, a children's book shouldn't really require the approval of a an adult. Help no, but read. we do have in our policy that it is the it specifically states in there in our collection development policy that the parent has the is the responsible person, and it is up to them on what to monitor what their children check out or read. It's basic. It basically puts it back on the parent because we are not responsible. We just provide all of the. When you talk about bestsellers, whose list are you looking at? Not the New York Times, I hope. We look at New York Times. They look at all the bestseller lists out there. Correct. Yes, usually it's adults that request books. Um, we really don't have many adults that request specific books for children. It's usually for themselves. Um, the first thing we do is see if it's in the statewide system, and if it is, put it on hold for them. And then we do some research to see if we need to purchase that particular book. Member of that. It's the American Library Association is the professional association for libraries, librarians. Um, our friends group has a membership to it for the libraries, for the Columbia County libraries. Some of my staff are members of it. Um, basically, we are they are members of it for the professional development. Um, we don't they don't follow any, I guess, recommendations or guidelines to purchase materials. Um, they basically use the list that the vendor sends are based on popularity, <coughs> availability. Um, so <laughs> for the review <laughs> and what other what other librarians have said about the items, but no, they don't um, mainly their membership to ALA is for the professional development. Um, they don't Always, we don't always, we don't like follow word for word what ALA says. The only thing we follow is the Library Bill of Rights, the freedom to read, and the freedom to view are the three basic things that all libraries follow. Now, it's possible for me to uh, vanity publish a book and with 500 of my best friends 
make it a bestseller. Is, is that is that a process that can enter if it's, category of books? If it's self-published, it won't go. It will only come to our attention if a patron brings it to our attention. Um, we typically don't purchase self-published books because there are <laughs> grammatical errors, punctuation errors. So there are no vanity books in that right. collection. Yes, um, and that's also part of your censoring this one already group and then calling attention to them. So nobody, everybody's going to want to go, oh, what are these books over here? They're special, um, but then also the books that they are intended for, those people are not going to want to go over there because everyone is going to know. Well, thank you for clarifying that for us. Welcome. Thank you. All right, ma'am. <laughs> Move right into a debate here. Um, animal services, donations, et cetera. Mr. Luton. Yes, sir. Thank you. We have uh, a, a couple of donations for animal services, one in the amount of $500 from Deborah Rabe. And one hundred dollars from K and S alterations. Staff recommends approval. Mr. So moved. Uh, and I believe Mr. Johnson's going to. I'll take the next two, Mr. Chairman. Uh, next, you have is a service agreement with the City of Harlem. This is for the Oliver Hardy Festival. Historically, the county has supported that with hotel motel tax due to the number of patrons. Uh, they have not made the request the last couple of years, but it is an item that we have traditionally. Uh, budgeted for in hotel motel tax so before you have a service agreement uh, recommending the approval of three thousand dollars for the 2022 Oliver Hardy festival so moved uh, and then the next item you have is a lease agreement with the family Y um, as you know the family Y has been utilizing space in our exhibition center since the, the beginning since we moved into that building um, we have I've been working with them over the years to discuss potentially uh, building a larger facility. That's something that I think was slowed down a bit by COVID, and I think they were on the right track, and it slowed down a bit. This is a lease extension just for one year. We're not looking to do an entire term. I have been in discussions with the president and CEO of the Y, letting them know that it's the county's long-term intention to fully utilize that building for county uses. Uh, so they would have to you know, move forward with their capital project. My understanding is that they're moving forward with trying to raise the funds now uh, or begin the process to do that. Uh, but we are only entering into a one-year agreement. You can see the terms of the agreement here. Uh, it will begin on October 4, 2022 and terminate April 30, 2023. I believe Mr. Luton sits on that board. Is that correct? Not the months, is it? Yeah, so... so you know, I think we, we, we've been doing this since 2010. In six months, your increments or? We can do it whatever, we can do whatever increments we want to. I, I think we really need to have a really, we need, we need to have a serious conversation with the why as to what their intent is. And I think just doing this, getting us on track, making sure that we have the approval. I believe we may have missed one of our uh, renewals. That, that allows them, it allows them to stay. The contract allows them to stay. They've, they've been paying rent. There's been no problem with any of that. But uh, I think we're comfortable with, with terminating soon. And then we, we need to decide what we need to do. And we need a real timeline as to when they're going to be moving out. That, that was my point. Yes, sir. Well, this is this going to be left out. We're going to be building for you. Yep. And they hadn't broke ground. Right. We just broke ground. Months before we out, so. And again, I think it's. I think it's. You know, it, we could do another five-year contract right now if we decided we wanted to do that. I don't know that that's in the best interest of the county to to do that at this point. I think this year to year, getting us back on cycle, and then doing a year to year um, with the understanding that we need that additional space is is the better way to go, and that's the recommendation.
I don't, I don't know any, any further information. I will say that we are also looking at a land swap. There was a, there was a, a bit of an issue with um, uh, connectivity and, and access, and there's a piece of land that the Y would like access to, to, to be able to move forward with, it, with their project, their self-building project. And there's a piece of land across the road that does them no good that I think would be beneficial to the county. Um, so we're looking at that now. We've already had that survey. We worked that out. So that's a, another discussion that um, Mr. McConnell and I will need to have. So moved. Mr. Driver, any legal matters? Thank you. <clears throat> we have uh, staff reports. Before we start, Chief, thank you for extinguishing samples last night. Uh, well, it'll probably be active for a couple of days. Yeah, they're close to my barn, so thank you. <laughs> but, yeah, that was a big operation. All right. Um, I have the year-to-date response summary and the August response summary, and I'd be glad to answer any questions. And I have our year-to-date budget report. All right, sir. Any questions? Can we accept that information? We have any uh, commissioner public comments? Nothing in executive session? Adjourn 851. The engine light's going to come on. Yeah. I'd like to call the order to Public Works and Internal Services Committee for September 27th. Already having the invocation and the pledge. Present this morning. I have, sir. I, I move to accept them. And okay, Mr. Johnson. Ready for your approval, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we'll get right on down to presentation. Proclamation this morning. Katie, Beth, and Mike, and Connie, Kyle, come up. Uh, proclamation for Stormwater Awareness Week. Whereas Columbia County is fortunate to have abundant fresh water resources, a lake, river, and numerous streams and wetlands we use to support life, the economy, and recreational activities. Whereas water bodies that wind th their way through the county feed the mighty Savannah River, our community draws an average of 12 to 33 million gallons of water per day from the Savannah River for drinking and other water uses. Whereas the health of our waterways depends on many factors, primarily among them being the clean water, clean stormwater recharge. The journey of a raindrop to the Savannah River is where we all come in. Where the streams, rivers, and lakes are degraded by pollution, a lot of which can be prevented through education, awareness, and action, and whereas litter, car fluids, pet waste, and dirt are just a few of the common pollutants that during rain events get collected by st stormwater and transported directly into our stormwater infrastructure, natural waterway systems. And whereas the stormwater department works to reduce pollution through education, planning, inspections, and maintenance activities, many other departments support the mission also. Whereas it is recognized that the community can support this mission by picking up after pets, throwing trash in designated receptacles, cleaning up soils, spills, and being conscious of how daily activities can influence water quality. Now, therefore, in recognition of the vital role of water resources in this community, Columbia County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim last week in September as Stormwater Awareness Week and encourage citizens of Columbia County to help protect and preserve water quality by taking action to prevent gradation of these resources. Y'all for what you do. The report is very lengthy and a lot of good information that y'all had in the, in our packet. Appreciate it. Thank you for everything. Say something. I would just I would just say that we're very fortunate to have a proactive staff that that, that 
look ahead and, and understand the importance of our water infrastructure and storm runoff. So we have Sure. So we have Katie Beth Jennings. She's our stormwater compliance manager, department manager. We have Connie Smith, who's over our floodplains. Um, and then we have Mike Zoner, who's over our stormwater operations group. Next up, I think Donna has a report for us. Doing well today. Uh, our yearly update for our uh, hazard mitigation staff. Few projects are complete. Projects on our first project is uh, Point Comfort Triple Line of 60. That was badly corroded. Uh, actually, had a, a rain event. They came in, pipes, bottom of the pipe choke up, pipes folded in, caused the water to build up, flood the road. Slip line, the, uh, the pipe with a 48 inch HP storm. Pressure grout around the post, which is the pipe, and then our new pipe. Uh, not just in. Two pipes, but the run underneath the pipe washed away. Second project was uh, the water veil, triple line to 84 inch. Same scenario, just bad, badly corroded pipe. Uh, next picture you can see it actually came up uh, during a rain event with pipes and underneath the pipe shooting up. with more CP progress of the work our, our last project that we will put off the list is Catamore some water upgrade project it was a thousand foot of pipe that we added um, On during this run, Got a, got a call every time hard rain event from after this project was completed. Hey, she called me back. Come by and get it. <laughs> yeah, made a cake. <laughs> Project consisted of going in between houses, upgrading the pipes uh, up the middle of Catamore Drive. Remember that cost to that project, Mike? Uh, right at 800000 All three of those projects were. <coughs> All of these projects. We done one of those um, layer construction, water veil, and roof. Probably done house. We've probably done like these. We're very fortunate to have staff that can take on a lot of these larger projects in house. Um, but sometimes they do, depending on staff's workload and or the magnitude of the complexity of the project, we do. I think it's important 
to just just to note, uh, there's a lot of discussion about stormwater fees and people talk about the rain tax in Columbia County and how that's used. Uh, this these projects that Mr. Zoner and his team have, have done this year have spent the bulk of the of the money that was collected over this year. So that's three projects. As you know, we have hundreds of projects. We do have uh, a slots coming up. We do have some uh, some pretty extensive projects listed on that SPLOS. Should it pass, we'll be able to use that money to be able to uh, help with this. Uh, but I think people sometimes get confused when they say, well, I'm paying my stormwater fee. There should be plenty of money there to be able to do that. Here again, you see three critical projects that were done, and it spent the bulk of the money we had for the entire year. So should we have had another project or one that we're looking at for SPLOS that potentially be upwards to $20 million would take us 10 years of doing no projects to have enough money to do that. Growth that we had from Richmond County out aging infrastructure. That's right. That infrastructure because it's not problem for all the development that come down the road. If it's flooding up this way, water can't get where it needs to be. On, on development, so nobody likes paying it. Thankful to have that we're Cool your mic down just a little bit, Mr. Chairman. And uh, uh, Mike, thank you. Perfect. Mike, Mike and his department does a, a fantastic job on getting out and taking care of this stuff and the uh, pension ponds and what y'all do and all of those. And so thank you, Mike, and your staff. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. On down, we'll go right into I believe you are. Eric, good morning. How are y'all today? Uh, the first item I have is a uh, sewer repair or sewer uh, reroute on Ronald Reagan Drive. Um, we have a section of that sewer that has a little belly in it that drops and it clogs occasionally, so we have to go out every several weeks oh. and uh, maintain the sewer to keep it from clogging and backing up. And uh, it's a little more difficult than just repairing that one spot because we have conflicts with other utilities in place already. So we need to reroute this sewer. And uh, we had a budget of 250000 to do that. And we took a bid and it came in at three ninety nine. dollars um, We went back to Blair, which is the low bidder, um, through procurement and I negotiated with them and changed some of the methods of construction. Like, you know, we plan on open cutting because that's usually um, the cheapest way to go. Uh, but they were concerned about a lot of the utilities in the road are in Ronald Reagan. So if they bore, we were able to reduce it by 70000 And so the uh, new bid price is uh, three twenty nine nine forty, and staff recommends approval or awarding the um, project to Blair Construction. I do have a question. I didn't see a time frame in here. I saw where there's a penalty uh, if it goes over, but I didn't time frame unless I just missed it. Um, we'll set... I'll have to go back and look and see how many days we gave them. We usually set the notice to proceed at the pre-construction meeting, and based on the contract, how many ever days they give them to complete, that'll set our time frame. Yes, sir. Move a consent, sir. So moved. Uh, the next item we have is a maintenance agreement with uh, Yancey Power Systems. Um, uh, we maintain, or the county maintains, most of our generators, but any of our generators larger than 500 kW, we outsource. And uh, we have five locations that um, we outsource maintenance on those generators, and we're running a three-year contract with Yancey Power for um, for $95,208.75, and uh, staff recommends approval of this agreement. Move consent. So moved. Uh, the next item we have is uh, the purchase of uh, two cabin chassis Peterbilt, uh, from Peterbilt of Atlanta. 
Um, our existing uh, units are, our cabin chassis are 2009. They're getting some age on them and we're starting to have some maintenance issues with them. Uh, they're 2009 Freightliners and uh, we wanna purchase replacement cabin chassis for those, but we're gonna use the uh, maintainer tool bodies, pull those off the existing and replace. Um, we had a budget of 250,000 and the um, price came in from state contract at uh, $234,920. Staff recommends approval of this purchase. All of these are saying 2024 for the year, or are, are they out? A long time before you'll get them, or are they back ordered, or is it something you're going to be able to get? I'll have to refer to Nick on that. He, he um, got all the quotes for us. <laughs> I challenged him to get through it without talking about fleet, but uh, he obviously couldn't. Um, <laughs> we're working with Peterbilt. They're projecting them to be 2024 models, although they were nice enough to hold us spots pending y'all's approval. Um, but they are based on the 2024 model year contract pricing with the state. So we don't really have a projected date of completion. They're, record, they're looking at possibly eight to 10 months, and then we're still in line to get the body put on. But we are planning on getting them. They're holding our trucks, they said. It all falls in line with the budget process and money allocated and so forth. And it, Yes, sir. The way Water Utility works is we'll we'll transfer that money into the fleet fund once the purchase is made. So, Reese does a good job of keeping up. <laughs> There's a few more. <laughs> look, look here. It's y'all's lucky day. I mean, my goodness. Mm. <laughs> All right, what's your play? Move to consent, sir. So moved. Uh, the uh, chairman's probably bouncing around this morning. But <laughs> Mr. Chairman's doing just fine in, in Charleston. He's doing fine. Okay, he, he's, he's just where he needs to be. Okay, we're all good. <laughs> yes, sir. The, uh, the next item we have is a purchase of a pumper truck from Peterbilt of Atlanta. Um, we currently, when we need a pumper truck, we have to rent them. Uh, we don't have one, and uh, this is a budgeted item. Um, that will help our wastewater um, department out. It has a, has a large tank that helps us for cleaning out sewer lines and sometimes wet wells as, as needed. Um, and uh, we have a quote of $209,999.72, and we came in $0.28 cent under budget. <laughs> All right. Um, we We're budgeted two ten. So uh, staff recommends the approval of this purchase. Okay. Hey, do we have to do that rental from those... Regular basis. I mean, that's an ongoing, real sir, regular it, deal, isn't it? It's an ongoing deal, I, yes, sir. I'm, I'm surprised that we hadn't already got a pumper truck. Mm -hmm. Good consent, sir. So move. The next item is the uh, purchase of a single axle uh, CDL uh, dump truck from Peterbilt of Atlanta. Um, this Dump truck was actually in last year's budget, uh, but we couldn't get one. So uh, Nick with, um, was finally able to procure a spot for one of these. And um, we had budgeted in last year's budget $90,000 for this unit. Um, so it's because of the way things have increased um, over time at, and over the last few years, um, the, the price came in at $133,346.33. And uh, this is a replacement. We're going to replace uh, shop number 687. Um, and I didn't put that in here, but I, I wrote that down um, later, And uh, which is a year model 2000. It's a much older truck. And uh, staff recommends approval of this purchase. Move the consent, sir. So move. The uh, next item is a compact track loader for our uh, conveyance department for the eas easement cutting crew. Um, we, we need these quite often. And uh, this is a new unit, it's not a replacement. Um, we, uh, we had budgeted $140,000 for it. The price came in at $164,936. Um, but we have, we have several over there. The one, the Bobcat we bought recently, we've, it seems to be in the shop more than we, we use it. It's, it's, we've had problems, so we're trying out the uh, 
the one from Caterpillar, and uh, staff recommends approval of this purchase. We do have several of these. We have two in our conveyance department now that we're utilizing, and we kind of share between groups or between crews. Move to consent, sir. The, uh, the last item is the purchase of two replacement dump trucks from Peterbilt of Atlanta. The, uh, the dump trucks, these are wrecked trucks, and so this will be done through our uh, damage prevention um, or risk management, I'm sorry. Uh, but there are two trucks that have, that have been wrecked over the last several years. One of them was wrecked about two years ago, and we just haven't been able to get a replacement. So we've been down uh, dump trucks, and one was uh, wrecked earlier this year. And uh, so they'll be replacing those. The, um, the trucks are uh, 132,436 each for a total of 264,962. And staff recommends approval of these replacements. Total loss of dump truck. What, what happened? I mean, roll them or they are? Well, the, the first one, um, he was coming through an intersection and a young lady tried to hurry up and make the turn. And, uh, and she cut him off and he just hit her right in the side. There was nothing he could do. The second one, not exactly sure what happened, um, but uh, he went in a ditch, hit the ditch and went airborne and rolled the truck. And, uh, and uh, he didn't want to get drug tested, so he's no longer working for us. So. Sounds like they were worth seeing. Answer. So move. All I have. That's all. <laughs> you, sound, you sound like Mr. Blanchard just now. Titus, you ready? Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, the first item we have is an engineering service proposal with uh, Cack and Wood for the design of uh, some Washington Road corridor improvements. It includes Upgrading the current signals at Bel Air Road and Washington Road at Ronald Reagan Drive in Washington and Evans to Locks at Washington fan wire to mast arms. It also includes installing a right turn lane uh, at Evans to Locks onto Washington Road and installing a um, prohibitive left turn off of Fairclaw on the Washington Road. Five total projects. Uh, this is for the survey, surveying, design, and permitting needs. Take these to bid. Okay, on Faircloth, will that change that to no left in? Or I, I know the no left end will still be allowed. It left in will still be not be a left right out. It will not be a left out. Not left out. Yes, sir. Off of Faircloth on the Washington. This is um, this would be funded out of seventeen twenty two Sploss. Uh, we reached out to three uh, engineering firms. Uh, we got three proposals. Um, they range from $103,990 to $152,000. Uh, based on the, we, we requested both a quote for the work and also a, an approach and a schedule for the work. Um, based on the approach and the schedule and the fee, um, staff's chosen Keck and Wood. Um, their original proposal was $108,916.13. Um, after we selected them, we asked them to go back and add Faircloth. It was, it was a last-minute addition. Uh, so the total fee proposal now, it, staff's requesting is for $115,916.13. Looks like engineering is going to be a year long. Well, the, the survey, design, and permitting. We got a permit through GDOT uh, District and GDOT Atlanta, the traffic management office in we have funding allocated for these units once we Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Move the consent, sir. So move. Okay, the next item is for cell phone allowances for traffic signal techs. Uh, we currently have two signal techs uh, receiving $720 a year cell phone allowance, two receiving no, no cell phone allowance. Um, after working with staff and understanding how much these folks are on their phones, uh, on calls and via email coordinating uh, projects or with sheriff's department or utility companies, um, the, the 
traffic department themselves, we feel the need to upgrade uh, all signal techs who want to receive a cell phone allowance to the full data and uh, cell phone package at 1440 each. Um, so this will be a total cost impact um, written here or not, but we'd be going from 720 to 1440 for two techs and we would take uh, two additional techs who receive nothing now to 1440 each. Um, one clarification we show here that this is to be funded out of IPTF, but after speaking with county management and finance, uh, we would like to fund this 50% out of IPTF and 50% out of TSPAS discretionary. Staff recommends approval. Y'all did say that these guys are able to, if they get a call, they're able to start monitoring and even make some corrections with signals? Correct, so in addition to their everyday um, calls and communications at work, um, when they're on call, um, or if they're not on call, but they need a person that is on call must coordinate or, or work with them or need to, um, they can get on their phone, they get on Genetech app, and you know work signals and, and see what's going on and help communicate from the traffic point. Does this reflect the immense uh, data files that they have to download is there correcting the items I'd imagine yeah. there's a lot of video Genetech the the app and I'm sure Mr. Schlotter can, can speak a little more on it but I know it uses a lot of the, the app that monitors the cameras uses a tremendous amount of data I have the app on my phone I do have the app on my phone it's it's a large app and it's a lot of data and it's uh, I use it for different reasons than they do but uh, our system is smart. It's all web-based. They would use their phones, um, one, for, for manipulating signals that they need to from home. Also, they can turn their hotspot on their phone to then use their laptop to also configure signals. So um, not to mention all the emails that are going back and forth with these guys. They can now work where they're at versus having to come back to the office. I think it's a, it's a good move to have these guys work from the field. Move consent, sir. So move. Okay, the next item is... Uh, a request to reject uh, RFQ 2022-003-RFQ-2720 for the past sidewalk extension. Uh, earlier this year, staff issued an RFQ to design build teams to design and build a sidewalk along the pass on the Clarks Hill Point uh, down the River Watch Parkway. Uh, we shortlisted two of the three firms that submitted. Uh, we brought them in for interviews, shortlisted two of the three. And then the two that we did shortlist, we asked for prices to, um, to actually deliver the project. And they were uh, a great deal. Uh, the, the prices were much larger than we anticipated. We had 1.1 uh, budgeted for the project, and the prices came in at 5.4 and 1.7, um, so just well over what we had originally budgeted, um, so staff is recommending, uh, requesting that the commission reject RFQ responses. So at this point, we are abandoning the idea of looking at sidewalks, that area, is that what At we're this saying? time, we do not have funding identified for, for a project of that scale. Enter. So move. The next item is an agreement with Alfred and Benish and Company, Alfred Benish and Company for the I-20 gateway signage and landscaping project. This is to sign uh, both the monument signs, the Columbia County monument signs, and the landscaping uh, for the uh, 183 exit and the Bel Air Road exit on I-20. Um, we're finishing the, the phase one and phase two uh, portions of that project, um, we have about 400,000 remaining to, to design and construct these signs. Uh, Alfred Benesh uh, proposed doing the design survey and permitting for these uh, for $68,750. Staff recommends approval. This pretty much the location that showed showing in these photos, or can they be a little bit closer to the, to the entrance of the ramp, or? One on Bel Air Road especially seems like it's halfway up the ramp and 
So the way this works is we will uh, work with Benish on a concept phase, and we're going to hug that. We're going to locate that sign as close to the ramp and the interstate as we can. Uh, as, but we have to stay within clear zone requirements uh, to meet meet their standards. We're going to get it as close to that convergence point. As it. Mr. Chairman, one of the issues here was that concept plan. I'm I'm, I'm not real happy with the size and the locations either. So. We're going to have to see that concept plan. That's something that the board's going to get to see before we move forward with this project. Who's consent? The next item I'm going to ask Katie Beth to come up and present. Morning. Morning. Um, this request is asked the chairman of the board of commissioners and the rating system program. That program is voluntary that Columbia County continues to be a part of every year because of the tools it brings to the city, making us more flood ready and flood resilient. This time last year, we stepped into a class six designation, which is the best we've ever been, and results in a 20% discount for our citizens flood insurance. But that discount is just one of the many benefits of this program. I believe that y'all have a pretty lengthy packet <laughs> showcasing a lot of the activities we do. And that's just a random selection that they told us to report on this year. By a lot of different groups, such as Mike Zahner and Stormwater Operations, Connie Smith, our floodplain manager, and a lot of other groups in the county. But in the end, it only, not only makes our individual citizens um, a little more ready for a possible flood, but also our community as a whole grow. And we mission to make sure that we uh, are educated Ready. So can we improve our level more of a discount or is that are we where we um, can achieve? I love or? that question. We, we absolutely ready. can. <laughs> we are looking into it right now and we, we will continue to push to be the best that we can be. Hey, that's good. The, the, so the uh, county managers recently asked us to see if we can upgrade that so we're, we're working on that now. So the request here is for the chairman to be able to sign off on the documentation that needs to be? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Katie Beth. The next item we have is for the acceptance of improvements for Hanover Place. This is the, uh, the new development off of Evans Locks Road. Uh, this will be a private development. Uh, all the infrastructure in the development will be private, except for the water and sanitary sewer systems, along with the easements associated with these improvements. Staff recommends approval. So move. The next one we have is acceptance of improvements for APS Tanner Court Investments, LLC. Uh, this is the recent, um, recently opened a store off of Evans Locks at Furious Ferry. Um, whenever county abandoned a portion of the Tanner Court right away, uh, there were there was a outfall, storm drainage outfall from Furious Ferry discharging into that right away. Um, we need access to that easement so that we can maintain that. Uh, our goal is is once the Furious Ferry project is complete, to deed that GDOT. But at this point in time, with the Furious Ferry project going on, we'd still like to maintain access. And we see the most uh, efficient path forward, um, an effective path forward right now to not uh, slow down the Furious Ferry project would be to accept the easement. Um, Part of the county, uh, have the county accept the easement and then at a future date, Columbia County, I did to GDOT. Staff recommends approval of the acceptance of the, all the storm and the, there's also a sta uh, sanitary sewer um, service manhole and a service. Good consent, sir. So move. Uh, the next item we have is acceptance of improvements for Edmondson Moncrief LLC. 4400 River Watch Parkway. This is for a uh, currently the, there's a plan put together for a five suite office complex right off of River Watch Parkway. Uh, one of the 
uh, requirements is they install a right turn diesel lane. Uh, in order to do that, uh, they need to dedicate some right of way to the county to maintain op uh, maintenance of, of Riverwatch Parkway uh, when they install this turn lane. Uh, staff recommends acceptance of the right of way as shown on the plat. So there will be additional turn lane, what's shown in this photo, for a project or property down the road. Is that correct? So they'll build additional turn lane. They're gonna the current turn the the turn lane they're proposing is not there. The but new I, turn lane. Yeah. I move to consent. So move. The next item is acceptance of improvements for Grand Oak River Island LLC. Uh, this is to this includes a sidewalk and associated easement abutting uh, Blackstone Camp Road uh, that the county is working on right now. A plan to tie basically River Island uh, to Stallings Island Middle School. This is part of that plan and the accept the sidewalk along with a sanitary sewer service manhole and a master meter uh, water service easement. Um, staff recommends acceptance of all the easements. Where this sidewalk, and I know this is different, but where this sidewalk ends, we do have an agreement with the developer that we will be able to continue that sidewalk instead of it dead ending. And Correct, there is a, there is a condition as a part of their rezoning that they must dedicate that easement over to us. We're working with the developer now on executing that easement. Communication with the Board of Education so okay. it doesn't stop and looks like- That's correct. We met with the Board of Education uh, about two or three weeks ago. Uh, they're aware uh, as soon as we get the easement dedicated to the county and, st and staff's able to construct that sidewalk, um, they're coming in right behind us to pick up where we leave off and tie it to the school. That close together and Place instead of sure. Move to consent, sir. And the final item we have is Stormwater Awareness Week proclamation. This is the one you gave earlier, Mr. Chairman. Uh, staff recommends the Board of Commissioners approve this proclamation. Move to consent. Driver. Thank you, sir. Staff reports. <laughs> I've included the uh, year-to-date uh, budget report and the water and sewer construction reports in this, and I've also added the uh, estimated uh, completion dates for all our projects. Questions will be glad. On these that say on hold, what 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 does that mean? Is that something we're not doing now, or is it process of need to start? Different things, like the Jones Creek lift station, um, we're waiting for the uh, DOT work, the road work to get out of the way. So we're not two projects, you know, just on top of each other, causing some issues with uh, getting in and out. I mean, just different reasons. Uh, the Sugar Creek Booster Station, we're waiting on the hospital. Um, that's going to be prepared for it. So we've we've done the design on those, and it's sitting on the shelf ready to bid when we can get forward with it. Good. Well, I, I appreciate you adding that section. I, yes, I like that. Do we have an appreciation of capacity estimates that you mentioned the hospital group? Are we able to make an educated guess on what their requirements would be? Um, I'd have to go back and look at the plans to see. But I, um, we designed this, it's been a little while ago. I designed it when I was at a previous job. So uh, um, any disposal they have is also going to have to follow some OSHA, six different alphabet agencies that all require. Yeah. I, their own disposal. We did those calculations. I just don't remember what they are off the okay. top of my head. Sure. Any uh, commissioner or public comment? I have a couple of items for it. Moving to the full board, sir. All right, with that, we are adjourned at 9.33.